The words you speak are powerful. Amen. You know, I had to learn this. I learned this uh, in, a, in a supernatural way. I didn't realize this. A lot of times when you grow up believing that the scriptures, there's a lot of allegory and metaphors. And I know it says look, but it really means just, you know, think nice thoughts about people. Or I know it says, you know, believe for them to be healed. But really it just means just be nice to people while they're sick. You know, the the... the the instructions and the explanations people can come up with in the church are mind-boggling. The dances they do to get away from the reality of Scripture. And, and so we, we have to realize that we speak in agreement with these things, and it's powerful. So the Lord had to teach me this, the reality of uh, the supernatural power of speaking his word because I did not have that concept. I wasn't raised with it. And so uh, I had many circumstances where I would be dealing with evil spirits face to face. Let me just give you one. I was getting ready to go to bed one night, and I'm sitting on the edge of the bed. Lord, please bless the family. Um, watch over us as we sleep. And I'm just sitting there on the other edge of the bed just thinking about uh, my head hitting the pillow. And I get prompted to look up by the door. And I look up by the door, and there's a very tall, slender, dark man with horns coming out the side of his head. And he's standing there by our door, and he's glaring at me with this real menacing glare. And the first thing I'm thinking is, how did this thing get in my house? You know, I think we have to have that attitude. You know, this is my house. This is my family. You will not touch my family. You will not touch my house. And so I, I, I thought, how did this thing get in my house? So I just started rebuking him and rebuking him and rebuking him. And he's just looking at me. He's not even flinching. Now, I, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt because the word says so that I am seated in heavenly places in Christ. I know that. I know that I have authority in Christ over principalities and powers. So I know that this should not be happening, what's happening right now. And so I, but I continue to rebuke because I believe what the Word says as opposed to what I'm seeing right now. Yes. Right? So I, I'm continuing to rebuke. And after about 20 minutes, and suddenly the thing left. And as soon as he left, the area behind him or behind where he had been standing opened up uh, like a huge, huge portal. And there was a, 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 like a living portrait gallery. It was a vision that was behind where he had been standing. And, and the Lord showed me my family in the spirit, each of my family members, my son, my daughter, and my wife, and showed what they look like to him. And it was overwhelming. It was overwhelming to see how God saw my family. You know, sometimes we see our family and we think of the negative things or, you know, they didn't you know, pick up after themselves or they didn't do this, they didn't do that. They don't seem to be, you know, why aren't you reading your Bible more, all these different things. You know, why don't you uh, come to church more often? We think of all those things instead of seeing them the way God sees them. And I saw that. I saw, uh, well, I'll, I'll give you one. The first one I saw was my son. And he was seated on a horse. The horse was girded for battle. My son was covered in armor. And the intensity of his gaze, it was, uh, it was like what I've seen from angels. When you see angels and you see how inten intense they can be. Uh, and the power of God, you could feel it. It was, it was such a, a wonderful experience. And I never prayed the same for my family after seeing this because I realized I, I can't look at the negative stuff. God sees how they really are, and I'm just going to pray in alignment with what I'm seeing. And so, but I thought about that. That's why the enemy did not want me to see that. It shifted everything for how I believed and how I prayed. And, but I, I talked to the Lord about this later because about the, the resistance that the enemy was giving me. And I said, Lord, how can that even happen? I'm seated in authority in you. 
And this evil spirit resisted me as if it was nothing. And the Lord said, the enemy is a deceiver. He wants you to believe that your words have no power. So he maintains an appearance that your words have no effect on him. And why can they do this? Why do they do this? Because after dealing with humankind for all of these years, and even or especially people in the church, the enemy knows if there is no immediate manifestation, if they can just hold on for a few minutes. You see where I'm going with this? If they can hold on for a few minutes, then people will stop. They will say, well, my words are having no effect. My prayer is having no effect. I guess, well, maybe we'll just wait till next month. We'll, let's stop praying now, everybody. It's not happening. Maybe it's not his time. Or maybe I just don't have enough faith. Or probably he doesn't have enough faith, because I know I do. Um, or we'll wait till the healing evangelist comes through next year. So people, they give up because they don't see the instant manifestation or even a manifestation that happens within a normal amount of time. You could be thinking, my goodness, I've been praying over the situation for a year, you know, and I I'm just weary. I I'm, I'm telling you something. This is what the Lord told me about being weary because I felt that way before. I felt that way many times. I'm going after something and, and I'm just believing the word. You know, when I speak and I continue to pray and I continue to pray and I continue to declare, it's not because I'm unbe un unbelief hoping God hears me. It's because I know what the Lord Jesus told me. And that when he was talking to me about this situation, he said, you have to understand that every time you speak, things shift in the spirit realm. Every word that you speak is powerful. The power of life and death is in your tongue. And so he was, he's been allowing me to see what that looks like in the spirit. And, uh, and this was just one of those lessons to, to tell me, to remind me, do not stop ever. I said, but Lord, I'm weary. Continue. Redouble your efforts. It's like, Lord, I want this miracle, but I'm so tired of pressing in. Redouble those efforts. I thought I was pressing in. You know, I, I had times in my life where I would have what I call dry seasons. Now, my dry seasons look a lot different. I almost feel bad calling them dry seasons. But I, I would have times where I'm, I'm pressing into God and I'm praying. I'm praying all day long. I'm worshiping. I'm doing all these things. And, and I'm thinking, and the Lord says, I want you to, to press in. And it's like, What? I'm pressing in, Lord. And then, I, then the Lord had to teach me something because, and, and this is, many times people will get discouraged when I would speak because I would talk about spending time in prayer and they think, my goodness, I can't spend that much time in prayer. And that's what I was thinking when the Lord said, I want you to increase your efforts and, and really press in. And I thought, I don't even know how that's going to be possible. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, it's not a time thing. It's like allow the passion of your heart to, to be uh, overwhelming in your petition to me. Allow the, every part of your being to come into agreement. Not just spending the time in the prayer chair. Not just spending those three hours. You, th you think, well, I don't have three hours. Well, what about one hour with such passion and desire? for the things of God, that it breaks things open in your life or it causes that miracle to be manifest because we know his word is powerful. 